This episode is sponsored by Realtor.com, who wants you to take advantage of your free profile on Realtor.com. By claiming and completing your free profile, adding a photo, and all of the information that puts you head and shoulders above the competition, you're on your way to receiving free leads, helping search engines find you, and staying top of mind with past clients. To learn more about claiming your free profile, go to realtor.com forward slash profile. Welcome to the Real View podcast, where Ohio realtors connect you to innovators and influencers, keeping you with the real view of real estate. Whether you're a broker, agent, first time home buyer, industry leader, or just happen to stumble upon our podcast today, you can expect to hear tips, tools, tricks, interesting information, and so much more from the experts in Ohio's real estate game. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Real View Podcast. I am your host, Allison Wiley. Joining me today is Wendy Wassell. She is the co-founder of Divorce This House, and she is here to talk to us about the niche that is divorce in real estate and how it all works and how you can make this a part of your business strategy. Because it may not be as simple as you think, but there is a great opportunity that exists out there to get your feet into this market. And she's going to share with us a little bit about how to do that and how to go about it in the right way. So Wendy, welcome onto the show. We're so happy to have you. Oh, thank you, Allison. I have to compliment you on finding us because, you know, we don't advertise. So probably there are going to be a lot of people in your audience, especially Ohio. I love the state of Ohio, Mm -hmm. that are, are going to be surprised that we exist. And we've been around for 15 years. Yeah. Training real estate professionals, particularly realtors and their mortgage lenders on the smarter way to work with divorce lawyers. Yeah. And that's kind of what you guys are all about at Divorce This House. Give us a little bit of background and history on founding uh, your company, you know, kind of why you wanted to do that and a little bit more about what you guys do at Divorce This House. All right. I was staging houses in Nashville And one of my clients asked me if I could refer her to a realtor who specialized in divorce. And that launched divorcethishouse.com because I could not answer that question. This was in 2008, (laughs) a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And she was so frustrated because her divorce attorney was not listening to her. And she wanted a realtor who could understand what she was going through. And of course, it didn't exist to my knowledge at the time. And I called the smartest person I know, who happens to be my niece, Professor Kelly Murray, who has a degree from Stanford University and Harvard Law School. And she was on faculty of a top 15 in the country law school. And so I asked her the question, can you refer me to a realtor? who specializes in divorce. And she said, gosh, I haven't heard of that. Let me research it. And in researching it, we found that there's a disconnect between divorce lawyers and real estate professionals. And so Professor Murray has no problem getting to lawyers. In fact, we teach nationally. We're we're the only school that teaches everyone. We teach judges for their continuing judicial education. We can teach all types of lawyers, not just divorce, but probate lawyers, real estate lawyers, trust and estate attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys. Actually, the bankruptcy attorneys stand the longest in line to talk to Professor Murray after she teaches them live. I get the biggest kick out of that. Wow. And Professor Murray, you know, realized in teaching the lawyers, the lawyers didn't understand that there are four key categories of enhanced us due diligence that mortgage lenders and their realtors can help with if they're trained. You have to have skills. And most real estate professionals are going after the wrong client. And we can talk about that today, but that launched Divorce This House. And we are so proud of what we've been able to accomplish, but it's up to the individual to take the training seriously. Yeah, absolutely. You have to take action once you've been trained and you have to pay attention. What we train is only what you need to know to land a divorce lawyer, one 
We teach you how to land your first divorce lawyer. And what do most you know, real estate professionals like to do. They like to get on social media. They like to pay for leads. They like to, you know, go after clients that are filing for divorce, cold calling, spending money on mailing things out. And that is absolutely the wrong way to land a divorce attorney. And that I think is is really interesting too when we think about the clients and who we're going after. It's not necessarily the individual that's getting the, the divorce. It's the actual attorney who is the one who you should be speaking to and trying to work with and trying to get in the door with. And I think that's so interesting. And I don't want to jump ahead into, into the strategy and how we get into this. We will in a minute. But before we get started on that, I kind of want to talk about just, you know, the opportunity that exists with this and kind of how we should approach Approach it from a human perspective. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that because, you know, as we mentioned before we started recording, I mean, people that are going through divorces, it's such an awful time, you know, in life and a stressful time. And yes, and there's so many emotions and things going on when divorces are happening. Talk to us just from a human perspective as to how we should be approaching this. You know, what are some things to keep in mind as we think about working with this type of audience? All right. Well, actually, Real estate professionals have a great opportunity to tap into the sphere of concern. Now, if you haven't heard of sphere of concern, it's because I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's based on sphere of influence because over the past 15 years, the people that are most concerned about one of the spouses getting this divorce, if they know that you have special training to assist at the beginning of the divorce in gathering information for the client regarding real property, then that individual, the sphere of concern, will keep you top of mind and introduce you because they're rational thinkers. You know, divorce is 20% emotional. I'm sorry, 20% rational. There you go. And 80% emotional. And when are the divorce spouses most, you know, rational? It's at the beginning of the divorce. So when they first file, when they first start talking to their sphere of concern, and the, and the sphere of concern is not just family and friends, neighbors, but coworkers and employers. And so when I went to the Chamber of Commerce and stopped talking about staging and said, okay, everybody, I now am training with Professor Murray, real estate professionals on the right way to work with divorce lawyers at the beginning of the divorce to participate in discovery, in gathering information so that the client can decide whether or not to keep the marital home. That You know what that's called? I come from advertising. It's called the horizon market. When it dawns on the client, they need to sell their house. And they already know you, like you, and trust you. So the reason why we train mortgage lenders and real estate agents together, not in the same class, but we want you teaming up together is because if you work in discovery, that takes place at the beginning of the divorce, that's when the mortgage lender needs to help the house spouse. So let me give you some more vocabulary. I love it. <laughs> Allison, <laughs> you need to have the right vocabulary. And we teach that because lawyers are concise in their speech, which means you need to be concise in yours so that they listen to you and not daydream about, oh boy, she's a top producer. She works for this company, that company. She just wants a transaction. No, you want to talk to the divorce attorney and plug in to the discovery process and start talking about how your mortgage lender provides divorce mortgage guidance to help the client determine whether or not she or he can easily refinance the marital property that the house spouse wants to keep. So we have a house spouse in divorce and we have an out spouse. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Here is what you want. You want to be a neutral, assisting both attorneys and both clients to make the decision on the marital property. And in doing so, both of the spouses appreciate your help and you're bound to get one transaction. But when you do this right, you're going to get three transactions from one divorce. Let me show you how that works. If, let's use Wendy Wassell as an example. 
and she's divorcing Dave Wassell. Dave wants the divorce. Wendy wants the house. Wendy's a kindergarten teacher. Dave Wassell is a dentist. Wendy's income will not support refinancing the marital home at today's value, right? The average divorce in 22 was eight years of marriage or more. Most people do not divorce quickly after marriage. So the average last year was eight years and the average age was mid forties. So that's just helpful to know. So these are over 50% are homeowners. Wendy wants to keep the marital home. She cannot. Should she be talking to a realtor about that? Should the realtor say, oh, Wendy, you, you're a kindergarten teacher. You couldn't possibly afford the house. That sounds way too self-serving. Wendy wants to keep the house. The person who needs to tell Wendy that that marital home cannot be refinanced in her name is the mortgage lender. The mortgage lender goes right into new loan origination because Wendy and Dave are co-owners of a valuable property. We've had it for eight years. It's doubled. If you're in Tennessee, well, Ohio, I can't speak for Ohio, but let me just say Tennessee. If we bought something eight years ago, it's probably almost doubled if it's in the right neighborhood and in the right condition. Very similar to here. So yes, that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if we paid 500000 but took out a $300,000 mortgage, that's an easy payment that Wendy and Dave are making right now. But this house is valued now at a million. Wendy, with her kindergarten teacher salary and credit score and projected income on her own, cannot refinance it. But what if I sell the marital home as a business partner with my soon-to-be ex, what can Wendy afford? What's the new loan origination that the mortgage lender can provide for Wendy, you see? And the realtor is taught to immediately come in and show Wendy comps of what she can be living in that can be an easy mortgage payment for her. We talk about preserving home ownership eligibility for both divorcing spouses. Isn't that a better way than saying, great, you're getting divorced, let me sell your house. Yes. Preserving home ownership eligibility. The approach to this is so important, you know, and I love how you just explained as to how we should be truly advising, not just going in to say, okay, yeah, you can't afford this. Let's get you out and get you into something more affordable. I think it's so much about the approach and what you're explaining is just such a, such a good way to think about how to handle these types of situations. Yes. Because when you sit down with Wendy and say, Wendy, we understand that you want to keep the marital home because of the school district, because it's close to church, because it's you know, has shopping and it's it's safe and it's this and it's that. Whatever my reasons are, you want to identify them. Then you want to communicate to me what I can afford in my budget and show me that I'm better off with a right size residence. And, you know, I have car payment. I'm going to have all the expenses for that house. And I wouldn't I rather share the expense of sale, the cost of sale with my ex and get that house sold in the least amount of time for the most amount of money, take whatever my budget is. I have a very generous deposit on the down payment on the house. <laughs> Listen to me. And you, you know, you are so much better off living in something that you can easily afford. And we want our realtors and mortgage lenders to stay in touch with those who can refinance the marital home because in divorce, it's very different. Homeownership duration is less than three years. Whereas NAR is projecting now that it's 13 years homeownership duration for non-divorcing families. Divorce, stay in touch with those clients who easily refinance the marital home because there are hidden costs of keeping the house. And we call them the ghosts, the memories. Oftentimes you decide that you want, even though you could afford to refinance the marital home, you want something different. You fall in love again. There are all kinds of reasons you take a different job. If you're an empty nester, you can move closer to friends and family. Those are referrals for you to other states and other cities. We want you helping both clients purchase right-sized residences. And that's where the three transactions come in. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's 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 so true. It's such a great way to think about, you know, approaching this situation and these types of clients and how we could how we could be doing it. This episode of The Real View is brought to you by the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. Ohio's network of community colleges provides accessible training that accommodates the busy lifestyles of aspiring real estate professionals at half the price of a traditional university. 
With convenient locations in every part of the state, as well as online options, Ohio's community colleges are your smart choice for pre-licensing education. For more details or to start the journey to a real estate career, visit the education page at ohiorealtors.org and then click on the pre-license course locations. Okay, so say, you know, we got, how do we work with all these different types of professionals? You know, you were mentioning the mortgage brokers, we should be working with them, the divorce lawyers. What's your best strategy for us to really begin to build those types of relationships and make that a part of our business? Well, there are three categories to talk to about divorce. First of all, your vendors, non-divorcing people frequently know someone who is thinking about divorce in the process of divorce, who has been recently divorced. There again, the sphere of concern. So when I told my hairdresser that I was specializing in divorce real estate, she introduced me to two lawyers, but I had to prove to her that, you know, because she cuts the hair of other real estate professionals, I had to prove to her that I had something of value for the lawyer. So I would highly recommend that people that are listening to this, please do not just try to sell your real estate, you know, salesmanship. You need to, instead of a sell, you need to tell the lawyer that you have something of value that you can provide. And the divorce has a timeline. You're more helpful at the beginning of the divorce than you are the middle or the end of the divorce. The end of the divorce would be, and a lot of people want to do this, it's called court-appointed listings. To me, that's the wrong client because a court-appointed listing, if you're not familiar with it, it means the judge is forcing the sale of the house because one of the spouses is refusing to sell the property, usually trying to stick it to the other spouse. By that time, they've been fighting over a lot of things. The divorce is very contentious. You will never be a hero in their eyes because it is miserable. They are bad-mouthing each other, but also all of the us who are involved in it. And I was involved in two of those, and I still regret it yeah. because I, I don't like it when people hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I really try my best. I was a former kindergarten teacher and people become very childlike during a divorce. It's so emotional and frightening and stressful. If we can come in at the beginning. So I, I have to be honest with you. You have to have skills. If you really want to work with lawyers, you need to understand what they need And their need is to refer as few people as possible because that avoids a client complaint. So my advice to you is if you want to get into this niche, then you need to think about training. And you can easily talk to, if you know real estate attorneys, you can share with the real estate attorney our website and say, what do you think of this? Because we're divorcethishouse.com. And if you are involved in divorce care at churches, divorce care facilitators, show them our website and see if it's something, because it doesn't hurt to talk to them and say, if I were to be trained in assisting at the beginning of the divorce, would you be open to hearing more about that? Because the the realtor that I spoke with just before this call actually spoke with seven lawyers through a paralegal, and the lawyers encouraged her to get more education because that would be helpful to them. You have to put the lawyer first. But then what happens is you only need one to three lawyers to stay steady every single month. Because would you like to know lawyer math? Let me let me share lawyer math. I, I made that up too. <laughs> it's not a real thing, but it's a Wendy thing. Lawyer math is actually counterintuitive to general real estate. You only need one to three divorce lawyers referring you clients every single month. And that's because successful lawyers in your area have 10, 20, 30 ongoing clients every month that they're assisting. And they their intake is five seven or more new clients every month because they're losing five, seven, 10, maybe even 15 clients out of the divorce process. You want to be thinking in terms of 
tapping into the beginning of the divorce, realizing that if you focus on one divorce attorney and help that divorce attorney, the lawyers will then introduce you to other lawyers just like them or even more successful. And then you get their personal business, their friends and family. Yeah. Yeah. Really great idea and way to kind of get your foot into the door. And we kind of talked about a little bit the opportunity that exists there, but I kind of want to know from your perspective, just how big this opportunity is to make this a part of what you do. And, you know, we know the struggles of the market today, you know, low inventory, high mortgage rates, you know, these are always something that we're seeing pop up. Talk to us from your perspective, a little bit of just about the opportunity that exists. And you mentioned just how many new clients, you know, these divorce attorneys are getting, but talk to us about the opportunity, you know, and really where adding this skill to your business about where that could take you. All right. Well, I'll give you some examples. We call them case studies. But my very first class for mortgage lenders was in 2019, and we made the mortgage lenders all promise that they would stay in touch with us and let us know how they were doing. And in 10 months, one of my mortgage lenders working with two busy divorce attorneys did 70 transactions, seven zero. Wow. He triggered mostly listings because I said to him, oh, I said, you're slacking. What's going on? He was in Denver. And I said, "Um, you're only working with two divorce attorneys? And he goes, Miss Wendy, he said, I only need these two. I'm averaging five to six transactions a month. And I said, how many of those are refinances? And he said, 20%. Wow. The rest are new loan origination. And what does that tell you? He was triggering listings that sold. And then both spouses were new loan originating right size residences. That's 70 Now, you also, there are a couple of other things that are fascinating. I have a realtor in Orange County, California, who called me during COVID and said, uh, Wendy, you are not going to believe this. It's my biggest divorce ever. And she said, thank goodness I'm an RCSD. This family has 12 properties. Oh, wow. They had obviously the marital residence. They had rental properties. He had a warehouse and unimproved land parcels. Some were sold, others refinanced. And she was complimented because this is what's so beautiful. Talk about the opportunity. She was introduced to both the wife's attorney and the husband's attorney because she's neutral. She's working for the real property and not taking sides. Had the lawyer referred, you know, let's use Wendy again. Wendy's realtor, then the husband, ex soon to be ex husband, and lawyer could object to Wendy selecting the realtor. When you come in as an RCSD, you work with both lawyers and you also work with the mediator and you work with the paralegals and you also work with the financial professionals, all of whom organically introduce her to future clients. You see? And she was saying, what I love about this is because she she said, I constantly get compliments from each of the lawyers thanking me for organizing the clients. Because let's what does a lawyer really want? A lawyer wants an educated client. You can educate them. Allison, you said that at the very beginning. Realtors, your realtors can easily, with the training, have the skill set to bring education. You can't bring legal advice. But you certainly can help with education and gathering that information, utilizing your affiliate team, because we position you so that you have a team and you're the project manager if you're the realtor. And the mortgage lender has the divorce mortgage guidance that triggers the listings and goes into new loan origination. We're even doing bridge loans. Certain states, that's been very, very helpful with the divorce. Yeah. Such a huge opportunity. I mean, just the way you just explained it, if we go about this, you know, the right way. Is there a wrong way to go about this? You know, we, we <laughs> you just explained some really great ways, you know, that we could get involved in this. But have you seen any horror stories or ways to not go about this? Um, tell us, in addition to what you just shared as to ways that we should be doing this, what we should be avoiding if this is something that we want to uh, pursue. Oh, I have a list that lawyers have (laughs) shared with me, and I'll go quickly because, first of all, they do not want you to direct 
mail them. Don't mass market mail them. First of all, lawyers have egos. They have education and egos. They consider themselves important. And when you are sending out flyers to 30 lawyers, you're buying these lists, you are wasting so much money and you're damaging your brand. Trust me, if you're mailing anything or emailing or dropping by and dropping things off, you're going to meet the gatekeeper. And the gatekeeper has absolute you know, power over whether or not you will ever get to that lawyer. And usually you have wasted your time and money and damaged your brand. They will recycle what you give them. And don't demean yourself by bringing donuts and food. You, you don't know these people. It's You're making a presumption that they want this from you. Never cold call, drop off and drop by. August is a peak filing month. Allison, you could not have picked a better time to have me on your podcast. Yeah, no, that's great. When you mentioned that, you know, when we were planning for this, I said, oh my God, this is perfect timing. I love it. It's (laughs) so perfect timing. In fact, I thought you knew about it because (laughs) this is when people who get trained, lawyers are taking their break. It can be a staycation because the vacations for lawyers start in June when school ends. They take vacations with their families. You know, they, they're they busy during the summer with family too, because they are getting ready for the August rush. Mm. And if you think about it, divorce has two peak filing seasons. First quarter, January, February, March, New Year's resolution. This marriage is over. It cannot be saved. I'm filing for divorce. And then the lawyer and you can be busy all the year. And then summer comes and things are starting to slow down a little bit. And August is a peak filing month because parents, especially of children, look at the calendar and think the kids are going back to school. They won't miss me as much. And I can move out before the holidays start because it's it's really tough on the family for you to file during, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah, no one wants to be moving over the holidays, right? That's, that's no, not a fun no. celebration time. <laughs> no, exactly. But they don't want to go through the holidays again. So they make the decision to start the divorce process. And some divorces will take over a year. Those are the highly contested litigated ones. But plenty of divorces are over in three months. And we're pushing for collaborative law now. You know, when people take my training, they are RCSD designees. That stands for Real Estate Collaboration Specialist Divorce. Now, that's a mouthful. (laughs) You say you're designated because our class is not terribly long. You know, we don't teach anything you don't absolutely need to know. This is a system that drops you into discovery, utilizing what you already know how to do as a realtor. So if you're an experienced realtor, this is just a natural extension for you to elevate your referral partners who elevate your referrals and your clients. Yeah. And you've shared with me too, just a handout that I'm going to make sure gets onto our website. Once this episode is released, you are listening to, you can go to the Ohio Realtors podcast page and I'll make sure you have the attachment that Wendy's provided because it really gives a lot of information onto how, you know, you can approach this, why it's so important to get trained in this specifically, um, and just the advantage that it can bring to you and your business. I mean, as as you've heard us, you know, both share um, on, on the show, there's so much opportunity that exists when it comes to this niche, but there is just the right way to go about doing it. And I think that's really important. Wendy, any any last bits of advice or things you want to make sure our realtors know before we wrap up here today? Yes, please do not buy a book on divorce (laughs) from a ghostwriter. That is such a waste of money. And what happens if the lawyer looks at the book and asks you how you researched it or recognizes that the book, he has five other copies of it with different authors and it's basically the same text. Don't waste money on leads that only harm your reputation. Don't cold call people. If you're going to do this niche, research all the companies that are out there. And the most important thing is look at the faculty. Our faculty is Professor Kelly Murray, who has degrees from Stanford University and Harvard Law School. And when they look her up, they're going to see that she was 
She's on faculty of a top 20 law school, although she's retiring. So that will will be exciting because we'll spend even more time with uh, Divorce This House. And we're we're doing a podcast for lawyers later this summer and fall. And we look forward to helping you any way we can for those of you that are interested. Yeah, absolutely. And I see the benefits in it. I think it's a great, you know, way to expand your business. You know, as I mentioned before, just all the things that we think about when it comes to where the market is, how to get more listings, you know, we're always wanting to think about that. And this is just a really great way to uh, loop in and really just elevate your expertise too. I mean, us as realtors, we want to just make sure that we are being the best we can in all areas to serve all different clients. And um, your divorcing clients and your divorce attorneys and mortgage brokers, you know, fall into that category of clients and people that you should be working with to really show off your skills and enhance your business. So Wendy, this was so fantastic. I want to thank you again for joining me on the show today and for sharing a little bit more about this divorce world and how realtors fit into it and how we can really make this a part of our business. So thanks so much for joining me. It's been my pleasure. Goodbye, everyone. And to all of our listeners, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will be back with you next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to The Real View. That wraps up today's episode. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at ohiorealtors.org slash The Real View and on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Have questions, comments, or suggestions? We want to hear from you email us at podcast at ohiorealtors.org. We'll see you next time.